caught up in this mess, but it's also to prevent these things from happening in the first place or to do justice work in the, in the cases where it doesn't look like justice will be possible. Okay. Now, usually when it's a situation with a member going against another member, justice is usually swift. But in a lot of cases, there isn't. And, and the majority of those cases is when it's the police officer that is the offender. They get away, okay, and they get to harm us and kill us with impunity. That is a problem. Now, this has always been happening. It seems like it's a huge problem today because it's all over the place with the videos and the cell phone uh, photos and, you know, how information just gets shared and how fast it can travel. But this situation with police brutality has always been an issue for us in this country. If you don't understand that, Listen to my previous episode where I talk about ancestral memory. If you need more historical information about why this has always been a constant. Okay. The only thing new is the videos. Now, there was something that came to my attention about this ritual. Uh, I noticed some comments left on the actual uh, call to action pages from the Egbe Egun Ancestral Society. Um, they had two or three things that they published on Facebook. And so, you know, you're free to leave comments. And a few people were saying that, you know, they're not with this because um, they were basically saying things from that all lives matter perspective. And so they felt a bit off put um, by the whole, why are we focusing on black lives? And if this is um, your stance, then you're no better than the enemy that you say that you're up against. And, you know, shit like that. And then someone implied that certain priests, or maybe even priestesses, godparents, were discouraging their children, their godchildren, from participating for a similar reason. Okay, they didn't want to appear racist to white people. Think about that. Now, I know y'all have always heard me rant and rave about how I feel about certain white people coming to these traditions, okay? They're coming for one thing and one thing only. They could give a flying fuck about black lives, okay? They just want what black lives tend to have, and that's magical power, Okay, well, hey, that all comes from the ancestors. Now, if you want to come into a tradition that re revolves around ancestors, you know, uh, you got to have a role in this because the ancestors' children are being murdered. We got genocide on us. So what kind of person are you to come into a tradition that is African, the descendants of these Africans are dying their blood is being shed left and right every 24.8 hours a black person is killed by the police and they have the audacity to sit there and do that all of lives matter bullshit in an african tradition and what's so interesting is that there are white individuals in the ATRs in some form or fashion who are 1,000% on board with helping out in any way they can for this movement. Okay? But assumptions are being made upon them by others. And so these other folks see them, these white folks, and feel like they have to, you know, go, oh, yeah, all lives matter, all lives matter. Yeah, we can't be on board with this Black Lives Matter train. No. And then they look out the corner of their eye to see if them white folks is looking at them. Okay? That kind of attitude belongs nowhere in an African ancestral based tradition or religion. Whoever you are that's doing that kind of bullshit, I have no respect for you. I don't give a fuck how old you are, male, female, you Afro, you Latino, whatever the fuck, you black as tar. Your title, your tradition, your lineage, your heritage, big ass fucking middle finger up to your face. Because if I ever see that dumb shit cross my path, my eyes, my view, my mind, 
I'm calling your asses out. And I will do it on the show. I don't have any, I fear nobody. Okay, a lot of people underestimate me because I'm not initiated in one of these traditions. And I have no so-called title. So they feel like I've got no leg to stand on. They feel like I have no place to criticize anybody that is initiated. That's where you're wrong. Okay? You could not be more wrong. This is who I am by blood. I am a child of Congo Batu. You can't tell me shit. Okay? I fear no man. I fear none of you. You're a person. You can either be a person that I respect or you can be a person that does not deserve a fraction of an ounce of my respect. It depends on how you walk your walk and talk your talk. Okay? So let's just, you know, get that out the way for a second. On to the people who made it their business to do something and this includes my Christian friends and family members even though we might not agree and you saw me rolling kind of hard you know these past couple of days uh, it was out of love right? and I I basically said some things like you know it still boggles my mind how you know people are feel so beholden to the God of their oppressors but you know that's okay at least they did something shit I'm seeing folks out here that are mocking and laughing at people who are at least trying to pray for something, at least trying to unify people to get on board and addressing this in any way they see fit that they can. You useless motherfuckers, shut the fuck up. Let people who need to do the work do the damn work, and you're gone somewhere else with your sorry asses. All right? People are mobilizing, they are unifying. Take your sorry asses out the fucking way, or you're gonna get run over. Okay? Ridiculousness. Something else that's really ridiculous. Most of you all recall that during the Civil Rights Movement, the media, the newspapers, politicians, and a whole bunch of other regular folks were very easy at jumping on this bandwagon of calling Martin Luther King junior a communist communist and this was at the height of anti-communist hysteria in the united states they did this to undermine his message to undermine his music his movement to slander his character as a man as a black man i'm not so sure that they bandied about the word terrorist but i think they did if my memory serves me but what i remember most is him being a communist. Well, nothing has changed, all right? There are certain things that people do in this country that are always going to happen, and that is to vilify the people that are speaking up and making moves to create changes. That's what's happening to any anti-police brutality pro-black movement particularly the most visible one known to this country and around the world, Black Lives Matter. Now, there's a difference between Black Lives Matter, the organization, which has chapters all over the country, and Black Lives Matter, the hashtag, which is a social media movement, and Black Lives Matter, boots on the ground. That's people getting together, representing the movement, Black Lives Matter. And it seems to me that that's the thing that folks have the biggest issue with, the mobilization of people doing these protests, doing these marches under the banner of Black Lives Matter, the movement. They are now being called terrorist groups. Well, they were called terrorist groups uh, since their inception, I believe, which is when Trayvon Martin was killed. Okay, so but it's getting bigger now that that brand, that label has sprouted many, many, many legs. And so now this sniper in Dallas is being called a Black Lives Matter terrorist. Now, he was not a member of the group. As a matter of fact, he did not even like Black Lives Matter. He was against it. 
Oh, how soon we forget. Okay, he went from, he was said to not like Black Lives Matter. He hated Black Lives Matter movement to all of a sudden, two days later, he is now being labeled as a Black Lives Matter terrorist. And they are saying that all of the social media groups and pages that he supported or liked are considered hate groups and terrorist groups, including groups that deal with, get this now, holistic living and naturopathy and groups that are against GMOs and Monsanto. Okay, Dr. CB and them telling you how to live a life of wellness. That's a hate group, bitch. Really? Man, listen. All this fuckery and foolishness, it hurts my heart to see so many people believing in this shit. Just gulping it down and swallowing it. Okay? You fucking fools. So now, anything that's considered pro-black is automatically anti-white. Well, you know how that's so easy to do? You know why that's so easy to do? Because for centuries, white power always meant get rid of black lives. The KKK, the neo-Nazis, all of them, that was their salute. They put their hands up, howl Hitler, and yell out white power. So you put a color or a race in front of the word power, people automatically think you hate. And they're so used to white power hating black people that when we say black power or we are pro-black, that means we automatically hate white people. Look, motherfuckers, we ain't built from the same shit. Now, what did I say in the previous episode? We radiate love. But we, our love can't work on you if you radiate hate. You're, you come from a source of hatred. We can't combat you with love for you. Love your enemy. Turn the other cheek. Yeah, yeah. I saw you, Representative John Lewis, talking that shit on Twitter. Listen, man, I respect you for taking that ass whooping back in the day during the Civil Rights Movement with Martin Luther King Jr. I respect the hell out of you as a representative in our Congress. But for you to be all proud about having that swole up pumpkin head your face and shit all bloody. And they're going to tell the white racist that whooped your ass, this policeman, thank you for your service. That's what you are leaving for us to follow. We've been doing that shit for years. We believe that the love of Jesus is all we need to beat this shit. Well, uh, I'm looking around. And I'm going to tell y'all right now that uh, your track record, pretty fucked up. If that's what you're going to hold up to show me that loving the enemy is what works, you fail. F-A-I-L and big bold font fail. So we're going to try something new. And that's what we did on Saturday night. We tried something new. And what was new about it were people all over this land all over the world coming together with one goal in mind crushing the demon that is police brutality against black and brown people in this land and I say brown because in the past week five of our Latino brothers and sisters had their lives snuffed out by white killer cops. You probably didn't see this on the news. Because the last thing they want to do is rile up the brown folks and get the brown folks stepping with the black folks because they're going to have a problem. Because the brown people, their numbers are vast and they're growing rapidly. And the last thing these motherfuckers want to see is for us to unite together. Unity is the strongest weapon we have. And as long as we're divided, blacks over here, browns over there. Oh, and let's not forget the red man, okay, whose plight seems to always go unnoticed. Okay, 
Don't let us all get together up in here. Okay? Oh my goodness. 